It's only a couple people. I guess we're going to start. We only have a few people here today. Hopefully, more people will row in as we talk. Good morning, everybody. So I'm Dolly Wu. I'm the GM of Inspur Systems. Um, for those of you who don't know Inspur, just to give you a brief overview, we are the um, number one server manufacturer in um, China and top five in the world. So the company has been around for a long time, since 1945, and we are publicly traded since 1998. We are also the number one cloud solution uh, provider in China, and we built uh, over the past two years 285 data centers in China. Uh, we are also the number one software brand in China and the top HPC solutions provider. And we have the capability to build over a million servers uh, annually. And we just started our manufacturing plan in Silicon Valley in Fremont uh, in um, uh, last year, 2015, to service the customers in the US. OK. Um, so for today's topic, I'm going to talk about the major rack scale open hardware platforms available today. Um, so a couple years ago, five, six years ago, when the internet and e-commerce took off, um, it became very difficult and slow to deploy uh, data center, uh, hyperscale data centers using traditional hardware architecture. So um, the hyperscalers went off on their own and started innovating uh, on their own. So Facebook was the first hyperscaler to open up their designs and share uh, with everybody using the uh, OCP. So they established the Open Compute project. And then uh, around 2014, Microsoft also contributed their open cloud server into the OCP community. And then uh, recently, back in March at the OCP summit, um, Google also opened up their designs and contributed uh, their 48 volt rack into OCP community. And at the same time, the same thing was happening um, in China with the uh, hyperscalers in China. Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent, the BAT companies, got together and formed the Scopio project. So uh, the Scopio project is renamed now today to Open Data Center Committee. And then um, around 2014, Intel um, also introduced the rack scale, Intel rack scale architecture for uh, open rack scale designs. So uh, just to take a quick look at the open rack um, designs. So there's two different types of major open racks. There was a 480 volt open rack and there's a 208 volt open rack. The 480 volt open rack is mainly for Facebook data centers because most of the colos cannot support this kind of uh, power infrastructure. The 208 volt reface is more common and supported in most colos. So the key features of an uh, OCP design is uh, basically is rack level power. So there are no power supplies anymore in any of the nodes. And it's vanity free hardware. So um, the sound cards that you don't need in the server, the video cards that you don't need in the server, the covers, the pretty front bezel, you don't need all of that. Um, so the pretty front bezel just basically stifle airflow. Um, so Facebook removed all that from, uh, from the servers. So it's basically uh, bare metal compute, raw power. And then um, also everything is serviced from the front. So uh, very easy for the data center manager to maintain um, their um, data center. Also, the, um, the inner width of the rack is increased to 21.14 inches, 21 inches. The regular rack is 19 inches in the width, but the outer width remains the same 24 inches as a standard rack. And then also, uh, the U high, the standard uh, 1U is 1.75 inches. So uh, the OCP open U is 1.89 inches, slightly higher. So you can get better cooling through the rack. So these are the three most common configurations for the open rack. Um, compute intensive, balanced, or storage in intensive. Um, so depending on what the uh, hyperscale um, uh, data center wants to do, 
they can optimize their deployments with uh, dedicated designs. And then um, the, each rack has 12.5 kilowatt, can support 12.5 kilowatt. So uh, in the case of open rack, some of the, the spaces, the use spaces may not be fully utilized because of the power limitation. So uh, when there are no server nodes in the unoccupied U, they uh, basically put in a, um, a pizza box, literally a cardboard box uh, that is flame resistant. Okay. Uh, Okay. Um, the Microsoft Open Cloud Server design, um, it's very simple. It's a 12 view, and uh, the difference is it actually fits into a standard 19 inch rack. And then there are two choices either a compute node or a JBot node. Very simple for dedicated um, scale out, um, distributed scale out build. Um, so the, um, you can have a very flexible compute to storage ratio. And also, it's a cable-free architecture. Uh, there's a backplane at the back of the server where you plug in all the nodes um, and the JBot. So it makes it very easy to maintain and upkeep as well, and service. So where are some of these OCP deployments happening? What customers are adapting them? Um, so of course, Facebook, and then there's Microsoft, and there's also Rackspace. Rackspace, usually uh, the deployments for Rackspace type is 208 volt three phase. And then Goldman Sachs, a lot of the financial uh, customers are jumping onto this infrastructure as well, uh, Fidelity. And um, what is so good about this type of design? Uh, first of all, the efficiency, power efficiency increases by 38%. Um, and the reduction in cost comes from um, uh, maintenance as well. For example, Facebook told us that um, before they change over to the rack scale design, um, the, uh, they had to use one technician to 5,000 servers. After they change over to the rack scale design, the OCP design, they only need one technician to service 25,000 servers. So that's a five times reduction in staff. And then the Scopio project is the uh, kind of the equivalent of OCP uh, in China. And it's, uh, the, the Scopio design is kind of a hybrid between the OCP and the OCS. And this started in 2011 uh, with the BAT companies, uh, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent. And Inspir was the um, manufacturer at the time that was willing to put in the resources and the, um, the money into uh, designing this new design with the BAT companies. The uh, deployment, mass production deployment started in December 2012. Okay, so uh, some of the uh, design um, uh, the specs for the, um, the Scopio rack is uh, centralized power, centralized cooling, and centralized management. So in OCP, you have centralized power, and then um, the Scopio project takes it one step further, so to incorporate uh, centralized cooling as well as centralized management. And there's many different types of compute and storage nodes to choose from to customize according to the application requirement. Okay, um, so what are the design benefits for a Scopio project? Um, first of all, the density. Um, because now uh, you have the 21 inch um, uh, width, same thing as OCP. Um, so you can pack more into the same space. And Scopio retains the one U height uh, so that um, you can pack more into the same uh, open rack, uh, same thing like open rack, but you can pack more because the uh, fans are actually built into the back of the rack, uh, so you can free up more space uh, for the front to uh, put in more nodes. And then um, the power consumption overall is reduced by uh, 15%, and deployment speed increased 15, it's better 15 times. Um, and then the total cost of ownership reduced by uh, 12%, and then the failure rate is much lower uh, because now you, a lot of the unnecessary components are removed from the design, so, and then you can control at the rack level. 
Some of the deployments that happen in China include many different types of uh, industry customers. Uh, in addition to Alibaba, Baidu, Tencent, you have customers like uh, the 12306, which is the world's most complex uh, train ticketing system, also adapting this type of standard. And then the Cigna, uh, Huasur, and then uh, some of the telcos also uh, adopt the same designs. The smart rack layout. Um, so the smart rack, ODC rack, the Discopio is called, also called open data center uh, rack. Um, so the front of the rack has uh, all of the nodes and the power zone. So the power bank is built into the middle of the rack and then you can configure it um, based on what you need. So it's a customized configuration for the power zone. So for the US it's uh, 208 volt three, uh, three phase and then you can have a single power um, bank which is uh, able to support 12.5 kilowatt and then some customers may want a different configuration for the power bank and we can customize that as well and then in the back of the rack are all the fans so now the servers themselves do not have any more power supplies and no fans um, so it makes it much more cost effective so imagine you have 30 fans in the rack, which cools the entire rack, cools all the servers. Uh, so there are no more fans. In the traditional architecture, you have five or six fans and multiply by 40 nodes, so over 200 fans in the rack, which now you can save calls on and also is much more optimized to do it this way because each fan zone can be customized to cool the, the server nodes in the front. So, for example, if you have a mixed rack where you have some Hadoop nodes um, on the top, then you can spin up the RPM speed of the fans to cool those nodes. And then if you have uh, some static nodes, like cold storage nodes on the bottom, you can spin down the RPM speed of the fan. Um, so overall, it's very optimized for cooling. And then the rack management controller can allow you to monitor all of the fans and all of the power supplies and all the system nodes in the, in the rack. Then that way it becomes very modular design um, for upgrade, for maintaining, uh, it's very, very simple. So let's take a look at some of the uh, designs for the server nodes in the, uh, in the uh, ODC rack. Uh, so the, um, the first one on the top uh, left corner uh, is a very um, popular configuration for Hadoop. It's 1U with 12 Hotswap 3.5 inch drives. And um, the, uh, the one on the right uh, is a very popular configuration for HPC. Um, so you can have dual nodes in 1U, and then each node can have six Hotswap 2.5 uh, inch drives. And then on the bottom, uh, you can have a cold storage node. Um, 18 three and a half inch drives. They can be either uh, three and a half or two and a half, and all of them are hot-swappable uh, because there is a cable arm that allows you to pull the entire system out of the rack without disconnecting power, and you can service the drives very easily, uh, tool-free. And then we also off offer the uh, GPU node, which is one U with four GPUs built in. Very good for um, uh, HPC GPU compute. Okay, um, and then it's here, some of the uh, hyperscalers don't want to pay so much money for hot swappability, so we do offer value nodes, um, which uh, do not offer the hot swap capability, but still maintain the easy to service component. So some of the hyperscalers, when a, a system fails, they don't really care, they pull it out to put in another one. So. Um, so the uh, configurations for the rack, um, you can have more options than the OCP um, because now you have uh, ability to add multiple power banks into the rack if you need more power, uh, like the customized rack on the right hand side. So for GPU servers that consume a lot of power, we can actually customize a rack with up to four power banks. So you can have 50 kilowatt per rack. For, the, for higher power footprint. So you can do scale out and scale up uh, type implementations for both public cloud and private cloud. 
Um, so when um, these data center managers consider uh, building the private versus public cloud, um, there are a few things to consider. So for public cloud, mainly um, the, um, the most critical part is MTTR, uh, the mean time to repair. And then for uh, private cloud, uh, you're more concerned with MTBF, uh, mean time to failure. And then the scale, usually for public cloud is a scale out built. And then for private cloud, you need to scale out as well as scale up. So how do we come up with an infrastructure that can, uh, that can provide um, uh, for this type of demand, for both types of demand? So we came up with an in-cloud rack for uh, scale out as well as scale up. Um, deployments for public and private cloud. So we work with Intel very closely on the um, rack scale architecture and uh, come out with uh, the in-cloud rack, which is really uh, uh, optimized with a lot of the rash features that the enterprise cloud need, 99.999% um, reliability and uh, HI availability. So a close look at the in-cloud rack. So in the front of the rack are the, um, the server nodes and the power shelf. Um, and then the back of the rack has networking building as well as cooling zone and the rack management. Um, so there is a similarity to the OCS design where it's cable free. So there's a passive backplane in the middle of the rack that you can plug everything in. So that way there, there is no cable. Um, so for the scale up type of architecture, we offer four socket as well as eight socket systems. In the, um, uh, as the configuration options for the server nodes, um, and then two socket and single socket um, for uh, scale out. For scale up, you have four socket, eight socket, and then also for expansion module, if you need more PCIe resources in the systems, we can add the PCIe expansion module. Or if you need more JBot storage, you can add a storage module. The configuration example for a rack scale, um, so the difference between the smart rack and, and in-cloud rack, in the in-cloud rack, you can actually um, have a scale up uh, configuration with GPU compute or with uh, the uh, four socket or eight socket systems, E7 uh, configuration for uh, say a VM a virtualization or memory in memory intensive uh, applications like SAP HANA. So some case studies using rack scale um, so Alibaba, as you know, uh, the November 11 is very similar to the Cyber Monday in, uh, in the US. November 11, one single day of e-commerce trading volume on Alibaba platform is $14.5 billion. And to support this kind of huge trading activity, you need a very reliable platform. So Alibaba built it out using the smart rack ODC architecture to support this kind of trading volume. And then Baidu um, is the largest search engine in China, and they also use the smart rack architecture to uh, power their data centers. Um, before, when they were using traditional server platform, they were only able to deploy around 500, 300 to 500 server nodes per day. After they change over to the smart rack architecture, they are able to deploy over 5,000 servers a day. So the deployment ratio really increased a lot and it's a lot faster to deploy this way and then maintain this way. And they can save a lot more energy and reduce power consumption. And then the um, PUE ratio is um, a reduced from 1.8 for standard servers down to 1.3 to 1.5. So overall savings is huge for Baidu. So I um, am going to turn it over to James to talk about the uh, in-cloud OS, not yet, um, which is um, uh, developed by Inspur to support the cloud data center build-out. 
So in Cloud OS 1.0 was introduced a couple years ago when we introduced the open rack of the um, open data center rack scale platforms. And then today, the in Cloud OS 4.0, we um, announced it back in December uh, 2015 and formally released it to the market. And the in Cloud OS will provide the infrastructure for uh, the, the cloud data center built, and then Inspire also created a community to um, facilitate this type of uh, in-cloud uh, for, for the cloud computing build-out. And then James is going to take over from here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I have to ask. Uh, okay. uh, I'm James Zhu, and uh, product director of Inspire company. Um, as Dolly introduced, we are a total solution company. And Dolly uh, uh, talk about the hardware solution. And are we talking about the software solution? Um, my presentation today is an open, secure, converged cloud data center operating system. Um, to make sure our products can meet the future requirements, let's review the IDC prediction. So according to IDC, by year uh, 2017, 80% um, of uh, enterprise will commit to hybrid cloud. And uh, by 2018, uh, 80, uh, 60 percent of uh, uh, enterprise will use uh, move their uh, IT service to cloud, and uh, also by 2017, uh, 60 percent of enterprise will use called workload centric management, and uh, also by uh, 2017. 60% of enterprise will embrace open API and uh, open source. So it means everybody here working on the open stack will have a very good future because we will match the IDC's prediction. So when we design the products, we always look for the future. So if we can meet the customer's requirements or meet the uh, the development direction. Here is the uh, cloud data center uh, development uh, stages. And uh, for, for us, we will focus on to create an in-cloud uh, data center operating system. And our philosophy uh, has three elements, open ecosystem, and the service. And our, our operating system will have this feature, open, converged, smart, secure, enterprise class, and the business-driven uh, feature. The in-cloud OS will have four parts. Uh, in-cloud manager, in-cloud sphere, and the in-cloud uh, network and the in-cloud storage. The in-cloud manager will customize from OpenStack. And the in-cloud sphere is our own hypervisor. We, it's similar to the KVM or Zen uh, is our own, because we have our own operating system. It's certified uh, by the Unix uh, community. Our in-cloud operating system, um, as I said, is inherited from the OpenStack, customized from OpenStack, because a lot of customers, uh, because OpenStack is a huge system. Some customers don't need so many parts, so we will customize and uh, you know, get rid of some parts. And uh, suppose some customers have some special requirements, we will add the module, add the function for them. And also, we inherited the operating system, the ecosystem from the OpenStack. And also, we build our own ecosystem. 
and the, the enclosed operation system, we will support the virtualization management platform of heterogeneous hardware. It means this operating system will support the hardware from different vendors. And we also provide an open interface for our partner to write their own code. Here is our operating system's uh, standard interface. So from the include OpenStack, we will provide the interface to support all the uh, uh, OpenStack API. And we have our own include manager will provide the interface to support the um, uh, API to connect to the Amazon AWS and the Microsoft Azure. And we also provide the interface for our partner to write the module to communicate with our operating system. And uh, the most important part, we, uh, we, we will provide uh, SDK tools for our partner to uh, develop the own module. And our include operating system will support different uh, business model, uh, different application, and different cloud data center. Also support private cloud, public cloud. Also support different hardware from different vendors. And uh, here is how our operating system works. The include manager will take the request that includes the business request and the resource request from the customer. And then dispatch the request to the private cloud and the data public cloud. And then the private cloud and data cloud will use the request and get all those resources to create all this virtual machine and the management. So, our operating system is designed for the enterprise customer. So we call it uh, as business driven and uh, we also use a configuration called smart configuration to configure all those resources. On the left side is a traditional IT data center. On the right side is a data center deployed our operating system. The in-cloud operating system uh, is a secure system. We support operation protection, audit, and system security, communication security, access control, and the data security, and the SDC reinforcement. On the access layer, we support web security and API security. On the Virtual platform uh, level, we support hypervisor security and the resource security. Uh, this operating system is, uh, uh, can support disaster recovery. Uh, from data center point of view, we support all those um, multiple copies. We also support local data backup and uh, two data centers um, uh, disaster recovery, and also support hy hybrid cloud disaster recovery. Uh, and from end-to-end -end point of view, we support the active passive and the mutual shared active to active dis disaster recovery. This share means uh, a few data centers share one site, and the active means so two data centers are working together, but the data, uh, data can be recovered if, uh, mutually. The include operating system, uh, we, we call it uh, enterprise class operating system. It means we, we design for the, it's a big, big enterprise to use. And we verified for one single data center, uh, 5,000 physical machine, 
and 20,000 uh, virtual machine and uh, 10,000 uh, concurrent task. For solder defined computing, we, uh, we verified the computing, how we virtualize the resource based on the task. And also we support the memory preloading. And uh, uh, also for software defined storage, we verified one million IOPS and also support PB level capacity. And also the storage system will support the di disaster recovery. For software defined networking, we support uh, uh, customized networking, the SDN. Uh, we also support the software defined connection and uh, bandwidth. It means after you connect all the data center to networking, you can use the software configuration, define, redefine the connection and include the bandwidth. Suppose you, you think uh, 10 gig is not enough, and then you can configure as 20 g or 40 g And we support VX name flow control. We also support the virtual machine migration. Here is how the enclosure oper operating system looks. On the, sorry, on the bottom side, is the uh, uh, heterogeneous hardware. Above the hardware is the uh, virtualization. Above the virtualization is the open stack. Above the open stack is the service, scheduler, and operation. On the top layer is the uh, open API. Uh, also supports the SDK tools. On the left side is the security. On the right side is the monitor, workflow, and uh, billing system. Here is our key technology. Um, uh, the first key technology is software defined. The software defined company we support uh, virtual CPU bonding, uh, virtual CPU. Um, uh, a priority control. Uh, for the software defined storage, we support RPSAN, FCSAN, and uh, virtual disk lock and the sharing. We also support the virtual disk hard migration. And uh, for software defined networking, we support uh, a standard V switch and a distributed V switch. Also support layer two to layer seven node balancing. Um, we isolate three network, like a management network, operation network, and the data network. Uh, we also support a link aggregation. For software defined security, we support the mandatory access control of virtual resource. We support the virtual machine isolation. Also support the communication control between virtual machine. Um, we also provide security protection of the imaging file. This is the second key technology we, we implemented called the elastic computing. For this, um, for the heterogeneous virtualization, we support a large virtual machine, also support a lightweight container, and support the management of heterogeneous virtualization. For macro service, we support a high availability proxy based load balancing and uh, uh, default switching. We also support the base make, pacemaker based uh, multi node management and uh, support multicast based hybrid communication and also support distributed data management. For large scale resource management, we support hybrid cloud. Uh, cross domain storage and uh, multi data center management. This is a third key technology we support. Um, it's intelligent management. The 
uh, self-adaptive intelligent operation which support the big data analytics and also support uh, accurate prediction, auto-provisioning of IT resource. For large-scale distributed monitoring, we support uh, dynamic scaling of components, uh, support pluggable adaptive framework, also support the intelligent warning. The context-aware service orchestration and scheduling will support a virtual application template, also support the called business-driven and the resource-driven model. And we implemented uh, multi-objective optimization. It's based on your application. We will as, uh, assign the different uh, computing resource or storage resource. Here is how we build our own ecosystem. We inherited the ecosystem from OpenStack, and also we build our own ecosystem. Um, we start a plan, a Chinese name called Yan Tu. It's, uh, uh, it means uh, cloud map. It's a, it's a plan. So we, for this plan, we will promote three partners three kind of partners. There's a development partner, service partner, and a solution partner. And the final goal is provide a open, secure, and a complete solution for, for the customer. Okay. Do you have any sort of a management layer on top of your hardware? Oh, yes. Yes. And what is this for? Uh, it's similar to the um, uh, 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 OpenStack NOAA, uh, the, all the dashboards is similar. And we have all those demos in our booth. And uh, if you want to uh, know the detail, you can come to our booth, and we can show you all those details. Uh, uh, yes. So, when you come to our booth, we may can provide the slides to you. Yeah. Here is our ecosystem's current status. And we have built three R&D labs and the seven certification center and the 31 service center. We also build an in-cloud store, just like an Apple store. Here is our marketing performance. After we released the uh, in-cloud operating system 4.0, in three months, we got 2,000 uh, subscribers, and uh, we installed 3,000 virtual switch and 10,000 uh, uh, virtual CPU. And uh, we, we created two national standards and uh, filed 200 patents on service. And got 10 uh, big customers. And got two awards uh, from um, uh, the Chinese cloud operating system or the, the security system. And we got 19 big partners to join the ecosystem. And the Include OS is certified by the national standard, the Chinese national standard. Here is the case study. Um, a division from China Mobile called Huna Mobile, they are deployed our system. Their situation is uh, extremely complicated. They are, have 40 million subscribers and they, uh, they got 11 large supporting system. And uh, they have 50 uh, non x86 server and they got 1,000 x86 server and uh, 10,000 uh, virtual machine. And they got uh, three kind of uh, virtualization software. And also uh, they got six data center. 
and uh, they have five different kind of business model. So this, this system, their, their business model and the data center and uh, the machine are very complicated. So to, to, to support their system, um, we use this uh, case study to prove uh, our enclosure system can support this very complicated business. Uh, it proves uh, it's very easy to communicate with their supporting system. And also proves we can support uh, non-X86 server and uh, X86 server, uh, no problem. And we also can support the called unified management. One management interface can manage all six data centers together. From the efficiency point of view, we support the uh, uh, operation and the management efficiency it increased 50% to 70%. For the operating cost, we reduced by 30%. Here is my presentation, and uh, uh, if you have questions, and uh, Dolly and me uh, uh, can answer the questions, and uh, uh, you also are very welcome to visit our booth and uh, downstairs. Um, uh, we. Any Thank questions? you. <laughs> okay.